afternoon, everyone, also from my side. Uh, um, I'm Siddharth. I work for the Swiss Tropical Public Health Institute uh, here at Basel. Um, and uh, as Chah mentioned, I am a part of the OpenMS team uh, on capacity development. So um, just to get started with, um, um, I just go back a step uh, to what we did last time. Um, we talked about a general kind of scene setting, uh, what kind of financing mechanisms you have. Uh, and from there, uh, once we could relate a little bit to processes, uh, we then went into uh, looking at uh, OpenMS and how that then addresses the digitization of these processes. Um, I covered uh, last time essentially some bits around register, so how to have access to the system, how to create uh, geographical locations. Um, and now I, in this session and the next, uh, I will try to cover the remaining parts or so the remaining configurations within uh, OpenMS um, and then <coughs> Sorry, um, how do you do? How do you use OpenIMS for uh, different processes which you have uh, managing your insurance scheme? So, to start with, uh, this is kind of an overview of uh, what I'll cover. Um, last time I already started this part, so this construction of a scheme, I already, like I said, access and uh, locations I started, I do the rest and then go into these processes, uh, which also I briefly explained before this kind of structuring of processes, which together are uh, part of an insurance scheme functioning. Um, so basically what we have done is we had two separate sessions. We've combined it together. So this is essentially how the first hour, hour will run. And this is why we were trying to insist that you have a computer with you um, because we wanted to <clears throat> also uh, do some practical rounds and practice rounds. So that's kind of the first hour, how it will be split up. So I'll give you some explanation and then uh, we'll go into doing a simple exercise. Uh, so you can actually try out uh, the software and see how it functions. Um, and I'll try to more or less follow this kind of a time split and then stop at, uh, for Q&A. Um, I think since we are not a large number of participants, um, just feel free to type in your questions in the chat if that's comfortable. If not, uh, just stop me at any point, uh, unmute yourself and uh, please ask uh, any questions that you might have. All right, um, I'll do a small kind of uh, refresher from last time. So this is something which I <clears throat> described before um, as to how data kind of flows through the system. Um, and someone also gave me uh, the right term at that point that it's a web application. So you have it uh, sitting at a central server point. Uh, I mentioned how data can be transacted through online application, offline, as well as mobile phones. Um, and I just wanted to highlight, this is one of the reasons, so the first part which I talk about uh, around configurations, that's also one of the rationales why it's important to have uh, the application in a centralized place. Um, in this case, a kind of central server where the web application resides because all the configurations are things which can only be done uh, at the central server level. So we are not um, allowing, for example, in a decentralized way, creation of new health facilities or so. Um, from phones or so. Uh, this needs to be done on the web application. So you have your user accounts, you log in, uh, you have the rights to do so, and then you uh, update the list of facilities, price lists, etc. So now coming back to the construction of a scheme, uh, I mentioned this as well. <clears throat> the different flows which are happening on these three sides, the purchaser, the healthcare provider, and the client side. Uh, what I'll focus now uh, today on is uh, now going down to this side. So on the provider side, uh, the different types of facilities, how do you configure those, uh, what kind of services and items they offer, what kind of price lists and how these arrangements are encapsulated uh, within uh, so-called insurance product, which the insurer then uh, provides. And similarly, the different conditions which are given to the client, uh, the same configured in uh, the product. So what we did before was around all of these kind of access, so different logins, users, um, and geographical uh, locations. Now, how that translates into so-called registers. So before you start any scheme, this is basically what we are saying has to be configured in the system, all of this. 
Um, so what I covered in the last uh, session was around user profiles, users, enrollment officer, claims administrators, and locations. So what I'll now uh, cover is all the remaining part that you see here. So payers, it's a relatively small thing. This is just a third party payer, if you have any in a uh, insurance program, which might pay on behalf of a particular group or a household. So that's just the configuration of that as a uh, entity. So you can indicate at the time of payments. Uh, what you see here with the diagnosis list, uh, the diagnosis list is uh, at the time when you're submitting a claim, <clears throat> you might have some standardized list which you apply. I mean, ICD 9, 10, uh, whatever standards you're applying, uh, you have the possibility to upload that list. Uh, then we have these uh, medical services, uh, medical items. So medical service would be um, encapsulated in form of a service which is offered. So for example, the general consultation, which involves the time of a general consultant uh, who, um, um, who then will look at the patient, etc. but perhaps you have a standard fee for it. So that's what we define as a medical service. Items on the other hand are specific uh, consumable certain commodities. So it could be an injection, uh, it could be drugs, so paracetamol or so, which is uh, prescribed, uh, provided to the patient. So in Open IMS, uh, we first start with a list of all possible medical services and medical items uh, that can be part of the insurance program or that can be, that will ever come into Open IMS. So that's really the starting point to first create a universe of all possible services and items that can come through the transaction of open IMS. Uh, then we have what we call price list. And this is where we start making um, the specific set of services and items specific to a particular type of uh, healthcare facility. So you can also create, if you have five facilities and you have five different price lists, you can create that. But generally, uh, what we see is you also have um, certain price lists which might be valid across a category of facilities. So, for example, uh, in public facilities, you might have all dispensaries which follow a standard government price list. Or you might have um, uh, private, uh, sorry, um, let's say a referral hospital. And there also perhaps it's a government price list which is applied. You have two hospitals and maybe both are government run and they apply the same rates. But it's also possible you have a facility at the same level, say a private health facility, and they then apply perhaps a different price list. So this is where you can configure that, which is uh, what you do is you take from your universe of all medical services, all medical items, you create subsets of services and items which are offered in a particular type of facility, and you can allocate a price to it. So this is right now at the level of, as I said, type of facilities, and then you can create specific health facilities and then indicate what price list they follow. And this price list would then indicate what kind of services items are provided at the healthcare facility uh, as well at what rates. So that's kind of the flow and logic of uh, building these registers in open IMS. And once that's done, then of course, uh, the last part which we have in products, uh, which then encapsulates uh, all kinds of relationship with the client. So what kind of uh, prices are applied to the client, discounts, et cetera, uh, all of that aspect as well as part of the product, uh, what will the uh, insurance uh, pay to the respective healthcare facilities if there are any conditions on that. So that's kind of um, an overview of uh, what this means. And then I wanted to specifically show this on the demo server. And then I'll come back uh, and uh, talk about a small exercise which you can try out from your side. Um, so this is the link which I also gave you before, um, the demo.openms.org. So it's a, a demo. demo server which is always running. Um, and this is where you were doing your tasks. And I would also uh, encourage you to keep coming back here and keep playing around with it uh, to help understand better uh, how things function. Um, so what I talked about right now, uh, that was kind of uh, just to give you a visualization of how things are structured. So if you see here in the administration bar, uh, as I mentioned, I'd covered locations and all of these user profiles, enrollment officers, etc. 
just very quickly, what I mentioned with payers. So as I said, this is kind of a third party payer um, which you configure. So it's a very relatively simple thing. It's an entity that you indicate, which might be a third party entity, which will pay on behalf of a particular household or a group. So this is all the information. It's just a kind of categories, what type of uh, don't, I mean, third party payer this is, uh, kind of names, address, et cetera. And this comes into play only when you make a payment towards a household where you can uh, get this in a drop down. Uh, then the other thing I mentioned was around diagnosis list. So if you look at tools, uh, registers, um, we basically had for diagnosis always scenarios where it was never that it was configured one by one, but a large list was provided. So we always had, for example, uh, some scheme following ICD-9 uh, list, some schemes following 10. Um, so the way to add this is essentially through a standard uh, template, which is provided. Um, and you can then upload, um, you can have the list, a huge list of ICD-10 codes going running into the thousands or so. Um, and you can then just uh, upload that file here. And what you see here, this is just uh, some uh, simple logic which is applied before um, you make any kind of changes to the list of the diagnosis. So if it's the first time, then of course you uh, update a list. But for example, right now there is a list which is existing. So if I just click on download diagnosis, uh, you get to see uh, uh, it's always in an XML format. Uh, that's basically the list of diagnoses which are currently in the system. So a code, a simple explanation, um, and all that's configured. So in case you are now uploading another list, uh, you are I mean, there is, there will be a conflict perhaps uh, with the existing list and hence there are these conditions. You can also do a so-called dry run, which gives you a result of what would happen if this diagnosis list is actually applied. Uh, and these are just ways in which you want to apply the list. So if you completely want to uh, replace the old one or do you just want to insert the additional changes or just update the existing uh, entries, etc., uh, you can choose this. So that was the second register which I talked about, which was uh, diagnosis. So now going back, uh, I then explained about medical services and items. So the settings are very similar for both. So I'll just show you one of them, uh, services, for example. Um, so as I said, here you're creating a, a complete universe of all possible services or items which might come into transactions within OpenIMS. So this is right now a very general list, uh, a starting point which you've placed. So here uh, there's information like, uh, I mean, a simple code, some indication of what this is, um, the type, is it preventive, curative, um, categories. This is very specific to one type of product, which I'll explain later when in the product page. Um, the kind of level where you offer this service, uh, it's a simple service, visit, et cetera. The price, so this price right now is sort of a base price which you apply. So as I said, this is right now a universal one. This is not specific to a health facility yet. So this is a base price which you indicate. And then the care type. So you're here indicating that a general consultation can be offered in outpatient as well as, uh, sorry, only outpatient setting in this case. Uh, the frequency indicates the time within which the same service cannot be offered twice. So if you, for example, have here five, it would mean that if you want to get, uh, administer um, consultation as a service allocated to an individual, then it needs to have a gap within a gap of uh, five days, uh, the claim would get rejected. But if it goes beyond, then it's fine. It goes through. So these are some simple checks. Uh, which you are also building into the system, which can help you do some automatic uh, checking of the claims. And at the bottom, as you see, so what kind of uh, patient is this applied for? So for example, if it's, um, uh, let's say, simple deliveries, you can indicate it's only for a woman. And this way, as I said, some simple checks can be built in the system and uh, they can help you filter out uh, a fraudulent claim or problematic claims uh, at some point. So this is basically how you create a medical service or an item. You can also do a bulk upload of this list. Um, I have just shown you this because also in the exercise, it's uh, easier to uh, also practice this. Uh, but as I said, in tools, in uh, registers, you can, you also have a way to make bulk uploads of these lists. 
So let me just come back now. So medical services, um, and then this is now how you've created a full universe of all kinds of uh, services which are there. So for example, right now in the system, you have about 81 services. Um, and then the next step is, as I said, to create a cluster of these services, which are uh, then specific to a particular type of healthcare facility. So here again, what you see here is um, I have right now created for two different locations. I'm assuming there's different price lists. Uh, and what I've created here is um, price list by type. So I have here a government uh, dispensaries, government health centers, government hospital. And this is for one location and then the same for another location. So here my assumption is I have uh, different locations, different regions in which different price lists are being applied. And I have created different price lists for the type of facilities. So dispensaries, health centers, hospital. So if I open one of these, uh, what you see here is, so as I mentioned before, uh, you have the universe of all services and that's what is there here in the, if you scroll down, you'll see the 81 odd services, which I mentioned to you are all listed here. So that's the full universe of services which are configured in open IMS. So you make some indication by what date this is active, uh, the region where this is active, uh, locational, um, the, the location in which if it is applicable in throughout the country, it's uh, indicated as national. Uh, but as I said, in this case, I had uh, categorized by region. And as you see out of the list, then only four of these services are offered by dispensaries because it's a smaller healthcare facility offering a limited set of services. So here I've just uh, selected four. Um, and then these are all the configurations you already did before. You have at the end what's called overrule. Now here is where you start to customize based on type of facilities. Let's say all the government dispensaries actually don't offer this particular general consultation at 400, but maybe 450. So you can also indicate that. And then this will overrule the base price which you had configured in the system. If the base price is correct, you can also then just leave it uh, as it is. And this is how you can create specific uh, price lists for a type of facility. And lastly, for now, I'll go to products as well. But uh, right now, just in this chain, you then have uh, a healthcare facility. And a healthcare facility then, uh, as you see here, there's 15 or different health facilities in different locations, which I've added. Uh, what you configure within a health facility is uh, firstly, of course, where it's located. So you would indicate uh, the region, the district, uh, the type of facility this might be. Um, level if you have sub levels if you are using that or not uh, the type of care it offers uh, some kind of unique code which you indicate uh, an accounting code is more related to the payments when you make to this health facility in your system whether internally you would want to follow it using um, I mean where the payment gets done so this can also be either an internal accounting number a bank code or whatever uh, uh, that you apply you indicate uh, the name, et cetera, address, phone, fax, email. So these are uh, ways to uh, get in touch with the facility. And basically this is where you have services price list and you have item price list. So now I can say this particular uh, facility for me is a dispensary and it's a government health facility, let's say. And then accordingly you select the price list that you have configured. So this is how you do then um, creation of a health facility and uh, um, allocate price list to that respective health facility. Uh, what you see at the bottom here, this is uh, not very relevant in a simpler case. So this comes in because um, in some cases, the payment to health facilities were uh, based on a sort of capitation formula where weightage was also given to the catchment population of the healthcare facility. So this bottom part here is not really, you can leave it blank. It's not relevant in if you are not using this kind of capitation mechanism because it was just supposed to indicate, okay, this particular health facility uh, has this. So I've just gone through a chain, a region, a district, municipality, village, and I've indicated that this particular health facility is um, responsible or has this village in its uh, catchment area and 100% of the population 
population is uh, catered to by the healthcare facility. And if you remember configuration, there was also the possibility to enter population there. So this way, um, the So that's basically the purpose of this uh, bottom part. If you're using this capitation formula, if not, then uh, you just leave this blank. All right, um, I'll then just come back uh, to a small practice round. So just in the same way um, I, I described, um, I would suggest, let, let's just take uh, quickly maybe 10 minutes uh, and try to do this little task where um, I've described it over here. So basically, let's say now in the scheme, uh, a new private uh, hospital is being added in this particular region, Ulta. Um, and this is now being impaneled by the insurance scheme, uh, which offers all available medical services and medical items that you have. So everything which is configured in OpenIMS is were the same, but uh, medical services are charged by 10% above the standard rate. So this can happen in reality that you're adding a new facility, uh, but the services they offer, they offer it at a price of 10% more than what you had with the government facility. So the overall, which I showed you there, it's just a 10% addition of that value. Um, so basically I would ask you to go to this demo server here, uh, use the login and try to configure the above based on what I've explained. So, in, in simple words, the task is just to go back um, to the system, create a new, as it says, medical items are the same. Medical services, you will have to create a new price list for it, where you indicate the charge is 10% more, uh, and then create a private facility and then allocate the service uh, to that. All right, and uh, let me know if there's any questions, just unmute yourself and please uh, ask. Uh, and otherwise I'm around and I'll just keep track of time and uh, in 10 minutes I'll flag it and then we can uh, continue from there. And maybe I'll also on the screen here, leave the slide on. Uh, if you have difficulties or you would like me to show it on the demo server once again, let me know. But otherwise I leave the slide on here so that uh, you can refer here um, to the details of the task. Just <clears throat> huh? Okay. I hope you're, you've had a look at the, the task here. So I'll switch to the server. Maybe on the side, we can also see how you're coming along with it. Yeah, so please keep in mind, it's just the service price list that you have to create and then a health facility.
Maybe I just do it also on the side. What I would do is also, for example, just take a hospital. I'm sorry, it was in a particular region, which was Ulta. And another interesting thing here is uh, what you can do is uh, what we see here is thing called duplicate. So you can also take that price list from this region for hospitals and then just duplicate it. So it gives you a starting point basically. So you can indicate your name. So private facility list. Ultra region. So here you already have it all selected. And what you would then do is just overrule and add a 10% value. I mean, you don't need to do all of them, just maybe one or two so you're comfortable with doing this. You can just add, so it would basically be a 10% added here. So higher value. So that's the private facility hospital list. And you would then just create a hospital as well. So still 15. So if you see, I added here for the services, a private facility hospital list. So that's what I uh, created now. But for the uh, item list, since there was no change in prices, I just used the existing one. I mean, you're also free to create a separate one uh, if it's needed. But uh, in this case, I didn't need it. So I just used uh, the existing one. All right, let's uh, see. So I have added a facility. Uh, are you all able to follow this? Yes, no, maybe. Because I don't see here uh, anyone else who's entered yet, but I hope you have tried at least. Okay, you found it difficult to follow? Yes, it looked like difficult to follow. Okay, uh, but you understood the, the logic which I mentioned of the flow, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the when, when, I open, the when I open mm -hmm. the, the slide that you show, then mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to, <laughs> how to uh, translate go, it here. To uh, uh, be more, yeah, because I, I, I try already uh, the demo before mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the training. Yeah, but yeah. I, I cannot go back to. Okay. But I, I follow you now, but uh, 
how can I, I go back to the demo? Okay, so the demo basically, uh, so I guess what you're saying is this kind of explanation which I gave on the slides of uh, mm -hmm. the flow, this you understood how, you know, that the logic we have to create a universal list of services, then price list and health facilities. Um, how it translates on the system is uh, basically, if you kind of look at it uh, logically, go down to up. So whenever uh, lists are created, I always suggest go down and up. So if you look here, um, you first have services and items, and this is your this is where you create the universal list of all services and all items. So all services are here, all items are here. And if I show you in services, um, the universe right now is these 81 services. So that's the total number of this part here, medical services, which you have in the system right now, which falls under administration here. Mm -hmm. Now out of that, so the task which I gave now, I indicated that it's a new facility which has come up. But as I said, you don't create the facility first, you go down up. So the first thing you have to look at is what kind of price list does this facility follow? And there I said, the items have not changed any price. So you don't need to make a new price list here. Um, the only difference was that a new, um, the, for the services, they are charging 10% extra. So which means you just need to create a new medical services price list. Then this is where I went. And I, I created then, uh, yeah, I see someone else has also done it. Uh, that's very good. So I'll open uh, this person's. So you see this person has now created a price list here for that particular region. And, and okay, one thing missing here is I said that all services are offered. So what you can do is just say check all. Now all services will be part of this price list. And what I said was the only difference is that they charge 10% above the initial rates which are configured in the system. So what one would have to do is just say 10% of 400 is 440. And the same way, I mean, you don't need to do all of them, but uh, that was the logic behind it. That the same way you would add 10% to all of these values and update these figures. And that's basically going to be your new price list. And then you save that. So this way now coming back to this diagram what you have now done is out of the 81 you've taken all 81 services and you created a price list for a private hospital and that you did here so this way you have a new price list for the private hospital then you create a new health facility and i think no one else has created but i'll just maybe show you the one i just created <clears throat> So now what I did was I come to the point, as you saw in the slides, now my price list was created and the next step was to create a health facility. So I created the health facility here, location, etc. I did that, all of this information, and then I added the price list. And that's basically, you see at the bottom here, there is the services price list. So at what prices are services offered and at what prices are items offered, drugs, etc. So since I had a different price list for this facility that I just created, I can indicate here. So you have this new price list, which uh, the other person has made. Uh, I can select any of these and say, this is now the private facility new price list, which I have created, which I allocate to this health facility. And for items, I did not have any changes. And hence, I just use the existing hospital uh, service uh, price, uh, sorry, items uh, price list. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. But just try it. I think it's, um, it's, um, it's, it's really, I mean, um, I can explain as much as possible, but I think only once you try your hand at it, um, you'll get a better hang of it. And this kind of diagram is just to ex explain how things kind of relate to each other. Um, so if it's okay, maybe I move, move to the next step uh, also, just so that uh, we manage within this time, but please uh, keep trying it. And if you have questions, just let me know. And I'll try in the, you know, it's a, hopefully we have a bit more time at the end. Uh, we can also try to redo something if you want, uh, but it's really about practice. Okay, so I move now to the next 
part which is uh, in this diagram which i showed you this last part called products so here i will also go to the demo server now so coming back here under the administration uh, we basically covered all of these uh, step by step and in your exercises you've tried a few of these uh, the last part really is as i said the products and this is i would say one of the most important parts which uh, covers all the relationships which you have with healthcare providers as well as uh, with clients who are offering uh, an insurance product so i'm opening one of the existing products uh, so there's some information and you get an idea of uh, what kind of information is captured so it's quite a lot um so let's start with firstly maybe the top left um, in in this section uh, you firstly of course have to indicate some kind of uh, identifiers so what kind of a product this is uh, some kind of code to be able to uniquely identify and then you indicate uh, what is if there is any kind of geographical limitation for it is it uh, offered throughout the country that's national or is it only limited to a geographical uh, location so in this case this is for one particular region you then have a starting date and an end date uh, and this is important because uh, in any scheme you might have uh, some kind of benefit package which is provided and perhaps two years four years down the line uh, you have a review of this benefit package and you have a new benefit package which you would like to introduce maybe a new price to it uh, maybe new limitations maybe new um, services which you offer which before were excluded so in that that case you also have a date uh, to which means when does this product stop existing and what you have below is what's called conversion so the conversion basically means uh, at the at this point when the product ceases to exist anyone who was on this product and then renews their policy they automatically get shifted to this next policy so that's the logic because you might have thousands of households which are uh, on that uh, product and when the product expires it's difficult to switch them over so this kind of takes care of it automatically um you then have certain settings on uh, what kind of prices are applied so perhaps you have a lump sum on the full family or full group uh, some cases there is also a so called threshold number so some schemes apply conditions like a minimum of four can form a family so you can create these conditions or just leave it you can also have upper limit so maximum number of members which can be part of the uh, the family because in this case your family has a, a lump sum price it's not based on individuals but for a full family and then how do you define a family so you can configure that uh, you can also have cases where perhaps you just indicate individual prices so per individual a rate is applied and depending on how many members you do the calculation based on that you can also split rates for adults or children uh, you then have some other time periods so, so for example how long is the insurance period generally if it's a year it's uh, 12 months as you see here administration period if there's any kind of delays which should be applied before coverage of uh, the coverage of that individual starts so if a person comes first of january maybe for some administrative reasons you want to create a delay period and say your coverage will start from first of february after one month uh installments if you allow how many installments are allowed uh, grace period for payments so if you allow mm -hmm. installments then what's the duration within which you have to complete the payments yeah uh, there's also grace periods um, this relates to some schemes which apply what's called cycles so they have fixed time cycles so they don't have uh, what generally schemes have as uh, throughout the year enrollment so if someone comes on 1st of january they start 1st of january but some schemes due to administrative reasons say we will have a starting point maybe twice a year and have two cycles so one st cycle starts in june one starts in december just as an example um, and that any one who comes let's say in may the coverage will not start in may but then start in june and this ensures that everyone then ends at the same point uh, because the cycle is uh, for a fixed duration and this grace period here just gives some additional time for people to enroll if they miss the starting point of the cycle uh, there's also then grace period for renewal so if you 
uh, renew within these cycles. Um, you are given some extra time in order to renew, so you stick to the same cycle, and if not, you, your coverage might get shifted to the next cycle. So this is very specific to this one particular type of uh, way of functioning of insurance scheme where they fix cycles. Then there's also things like discounts, uh, renewal discounts. So if you come early and renew, maybe there is a discount which the scheme offers. So these kind of things can also be configured. Uh, then what you see on the top right here, um, it's uh, basically this medical services and medical items. So now what you have created is uh, from the universe of all medical services and items you created for a health facility, what kind of price list do they follow? But what you see here is what does the scheme then actually offer? What does this insurance product offer? It's possible, for example, uh, a surgery, this particular surgery is offered by a healthcare facility, but it's possible that the insurance product then excludes this. This is not provided by the insurance product. So this is what you can do here. You can indicate out of the whole list of services which are in open IMS, which have been configured here, what is actually offered and what is not by this insurance product. Maybe some things are excluded, as I said. And then there are additional conditions which you can apply, quite a lot of them uh, at the level of each service or each item. Uh, and these are things like limits. So you can create upper limits for what can be paid. So in this case, you have a price. Um, you can also indicate, for example, co-payments. So for this particular service, in this case, you see it's 100% which is paid by the insurance. But maybe you can say for just for consultations, you have a small co-payment of 10%. So in that case, 90% will be covered by the insurance and the rest by the individual. These can also be set for different conditions. So if it's an emergency, maybe you can say you do not apply any kind of co-payment. But if it's a regular visit, maybe there's a 10%. Uh, or if it's a referral, uh, in a referral case, you again don't apply any co-payments. But if the person bypasses and goes directly, then perhaps you have a co-payment there. You can also split this by adult children. Uh, you can also create limitations um, on the number of times these services or so maybe consultations are only allowed five times for uh, an adult or a child. Uh, maybe you apply waiting periods. So, for example, in some schemes, they apply for certain things like, say, surgeries. They say you need to have a minimum waiting period of six months or you can have a ceiling for an individual for that particular uh, treatment. So this is really at the level of each service. And the same you can do at the level of each item. So some drugs can be um, have a co-payment and some cannot. Uh, these kind of different combinations you can apply at the level of each service and items. Now the same way you also have here some uh, limitations which you can apply, but this is now not at the level of each service and item, but much more broader. And it depends on the scheme and how you are offering your benefit package. So you can also apply conditions at the level of each treatment or at the level of each individual or at the level of each policy or you can say a family. And these can then be deductible. So if they have to pay some kind of co-payment, if there's an upper ceiling or so, uh, you can add that. You can also split by facility type. So maybe for hospitals, non-hospitals, you have different types. Uh, there are some other additional fees here, so you can also some kind of administration fees if it's one time, if it's uh, uh, annual, you can indicate these things here and codes again as before, uh, uh, accounting codes or so you can add here. So all the money collected as well as all the money paid out for this product is uh, related to a particular code. Then coming down to this part here, this is what I mentioned, some schemes have very specific way in which they create limitations. So in this case was they even had limitations on the number of times you can get uh, consultation or you have surgeries and you had an upper ceiling as an amount for each surgery. Um, this distribution is a very peculiar uh, payment mechanism which is applied uh, initially in Tanzania, uh, what's called relative pricing. So you indicate for a period of time uh, the total amount that can be paid out to healthcare facilities and how you distribute that money. So you can indicate here whether it's uh, by quarterly, so every quarter, how should the money collection be distributed. Uh, and this essentially sets then the total amount that you can pay to healthcare facilities. 
and then the healthcare facility is depending on who claims how much uh, the number of claims it does a distribution of the payment uh, type of uh, payment mechanism which a scheme was requiring uh, using uh, and the last part here is this thing called capitation system and uh, what i mentioned before so here there's some kind of a formula which is applied so the parameters here basically are firstly you indicate what share of the contributions are to be used uh, and then you indicate um, sort of a weightage which you gave to different parameters and the parameters are the population the total population uh, in a catchment area then the total number of insured people in that catchment area and the total number of visits by these insured people so that's what you see here in the weights it's just split into whether you use population meaning individuals or whether you use families but that's why you have these six parameters but they essentially translate into these three total population which is being catered uh, total number of insured people in that uh, encatchment area and the total number of uh, cases which are coming in so that's a very specific way of um, uh, a kind of formula which is applied in uh, in tanzania now uh, so these are the different options which you have uh, in the product page and i would quickly go back and maybe pause for a quick exercise once again um, and we i would ask you to now you just have to make a simple product um, and what you have to do is just say the insurance scheme has introduced a new product from today uh, which offers all medical services all medical items for the whole country the scheme is offering the product at a price of 1000 per individual and each insured family is able to claim up to 200000 in a year so a full the whole family can get up to 200000 in a year so the ceiling is just at the level of a family or policy in the product page the standard rates configured in the system have been agreed between the insurer and the health facilities with the insurer covering 100% of incurred costs so there's no co-payments uh, here everything is covered and all you have to do is just create a new product on the demo server now uh, with this thousand per individual and a total family ceiling of 200,000. So let's just take uh, maybe not 10, let's say five minutes uh, and uh, try this out. And in parallel, uh, uh, please try it out on your computers and in parallel, I'll also just uh, do it um, and show it on my screen here. So here you're only looking at administration products, that's it. And one easy way of starting out is always you can select one and just say duplicate. So it gives you at least a starting point. It's not saved anything yet, so you can still make changes. But you can at least uh, have a starting point for creating a new product. So I just say duplicate. And I, as I said, get a starting point when they indicate the code. And as I said, uh, the price list should be for the whole country. So in this case, you indicate the region as national. So there's basically no geographical limitation for offering this product. You have a starting point, as I said, it's starting as of today. So I'll add today's date. Yeah, let's say 10 years it's in the market. So as I said in the task, uh, I do not have family-based premiums, but I have individual premiums, which was a thousand. 12 months, 
if I have installments or not, that's up to you. Uh, this maximum members, in case you don't have any kind of ceiling, you can also just put a very high amount, which means there's no limitation in the size of the family. I said services, everything is offered, items, everything is offered, and everything is offered at 100%. So everything is covered by the scheme. There's no co-payments. So that's by default already given here. So you can leave it as it is. You have all the information here. And now what I said, a total ceiling you have to provide at the level of a family, which was 200,000. So that's basically equivalent to a policy because a policy is allocated to a family here. So you will have 200,000, which is offered to the family. And the rest of it, you can leave uh, as it is with the default values because they will not be activated. The system will then pick up that the only limitation applied is at the level of a family and the rest is uh, can be ignored. So that's basically it to create a new product. All right. I hope you're trying out. And uh, as before, please just uh, ask if if there's a problem. Just unmute your mic and let me know. And uh, let's also just to move a bit faster with time uh, let me know please uh, if you have any questions as well at this point Could everyone follow this part? Yes, we are following. Okay, excellent. All right. Uh, if it is okay, um, I'll move on with the slides then, move to the next part, next session. And as I said, please just keep typing in uh, questions um, and I'll try to hopefully have some time at the end uh, to also address uh, additional things which you might have. But uh, like I said, it's just a matter of really practicing. And I've given you a much more simpler scenario. Another thing I would encourage you to do is uh, on the demo server here, if you ever have confusions, um, for example, this particular product and you don't understand what a particular field here means what does threshold members means or if you would like to know what this child o means um, one simple way for you to um, refer to this would be if you look on the top right this little question mark uh, it should take you to a manual for for the system and here you can then find uh, any kind of questions that you have you will have an explanation of the fields as well so here you see lump sum, what does that mean? Threshold members, uh, what does that mean? Uh, you can go back to this manual and also get a full explanation of that. All right. Um, then I'll come back now to the next part, so the next session. And here I'll try to also cover uh, these processes now. So. The construction of the scheme is done. All the basic building blocks are all there. And now you'll see how it kind of comes together to help with the processing part. Uh, this is how I'll try to again split the next one hour. Uh, hopefully we'll try to do two practice rounds again. Um, and I'll start now with the first process, which is the enrollment process. So again, like I explained before, uh, before going on to the software, I just try to uh, give you a visualization of how it looks like and then you can go into the software um, and I'll so I'll explain a process to you and then show it on the system how that looks like. So in um, in OpenIMS it's uh, very commonly used for informal sectors where as I mentioned uh, also earlier um, you have an outreach mechanism and this is what we were talking about in terms of roles this enrollment officer 
who's responsible for going, convincing a household to join. And then that enrollment officer has to collect some information from this household. So each member of the family needs to provide their uh, maybe some uh, personal data, name, age, date of birth, etc. cetera. Um, and this is customizable. You can decide what kind of information you pick up. Uh, you might need uh, identifiers. So in OpenIMS, uh, in most common cases, all the cases we are right now using pictures. So a picture has to be taken uh, tied to this individual. Uh, and then a payment is collected. And uh, the payment now is also collected in different ways. In Tanzania, for example, they've also started collecting through mobile money. Uh, but in most cases, otherwise, it's kind of a cash payment or so, which the family gives uh, to the enrollment officer. And somehow this information then needs to come back. Cards are issued on the spot. So the cards which uh, they are using uh, right now in the open IMA schemes, uh, they use the simple card with some basic information, what you see here, uh, with a barcode on the side. So there's no pictures or so on the uh, card. Uh, when they go to the facility, the barcode is basically scanned and then the information is retrieved from the central server. So the card, as I said, is issued on the spot and the rest of the information is then sent back. How that is done is also in different ways. Um, we now have uh, these mobile apps. So I will just give you a small, I mean, just so that you have a feel for it. Um, we now have uh, this kind of a mobile phone app uh, where all of this information can be captured. So you can capture all the details of the individual. You can capture, uh, the pictures of the individual, all of this is done uh, through this mobile phone app and then sent to the server directly. So this process doesn't physically need to, this data doesn't physically need to be transferred. But in some cases, uh, there are also schemes which just send the photo and then they fill up the form on paper and then send the form uh, to the office and then someone at the office does the data entry in the system. So both these variations are allowed. Money as well, as I said. Uh, in Tanzania's case, um, they at the point when this money is being collected, uh, they initiate the process where a sort of control number uh, is issued to the uh, family. So the payment is authorized and then the family can directly pay from their mobile phone or pay in cash to the enrollment officer. And the enrollment officer from their side can use uh, mobile money to complete the transaction. And in that case, all of this information doesn't even need to physically be moved, but is all done through the phone. Now, this is one part. I will just, uh, instead of uh, right now going to the server, I'll cover another small part. So after an individual now has uh, an ID card, what the individual then does is this simple process around health service utilization. So now the individual goes to a healthcare facility and essentially carries this card, which I mentioned. And then this card, as I said, there's a barcode on it. The phone scans the barcode and gets the information on the membership of this individual. So is this person actually uh, tries to establish uh, identity, which means a picture will come back, and some information on the individuals, uh, whether the policy is active, what kind of remaining ceiling they have, et cetera, comes back. And based on that, then in the health facility, if uh, all is valid, the person is treated as an insured person. And in other cases, uh, if you cannot, uh, identify or the person, the card is invalid or the person's policy is expired, uh, then in those cases, it's treated as an uninsured client. So I just covered this part quickly because I'll cluster it together and show it on the Bano server. Um, again, coming back to the demo server. So let's start with the enrollment process. So now, this is what I meant, either an enrollment officer can do all of these tasks directly on the mobile phone and send everything here or a form comes to the office. And it's basically this first block on insurance and policies where you start now adding a family. And the family is always started with uh, an individual uh, who is called the so-called uh, head of our household. So that's the first person that you add to the system and then the family as a unit, all the other members are uh, linked to this particular individual. As I said, it's up to you what kind of data you um, capture at this point. So for example, here there are lots of additional fields, poverty status, etc. And this you're free to then decide 
uh, what data you capture in your scheme. So what we've done here is this uh, on the demo server, you'll find a unification of all kinds of uh, fields that we had in all the different locations, but these are then customized depending on the need. I add some kind of ID number. I will not, I'm only adding the red ones, which are the mandatory fields, but you can feel free to play around with this. Uh, now, the picture is, uh, the only way picture right now comes in is through the mobile phone, because that picture has to be collected on, uh, on the spot uh, for each individual who's registered. You can also have like right now, I don't have a picture, but then later you can uh, get a picture. Uh, right now, if if I click on browse, there's nothing on the server because this has not come from the phone. So I'll right now do it without the picture. And I'm just adding some basic information like uh, name, uh, birth, gender. This is all, uh, this is not, uh, but basically here again, you have quite a lot of additional information. So. Uh, it's possible you have uh, some members of the family who have a different address. If not, you can leave it blank. That's why this field for current address, even though you've indicated before uh, the permanent address of this uh, this household. And again, there's quite a lot of these fields, and they really depend on which scheme and what kind of data. There's no scheme which captures all of this, but. Uh, this is just, as I said, a unification of uh, all the data. So now this has started to create a household now. As I showed you from insurance policies, I added a family group. And the, what you're adding essentially is just uh, to begin with the head of the household. So now this is the head of the household and this is some information which is then captured at the level of the household. And now you need to capture information on each individual in the family so here under insurance i add another one i say whatever relationship you add some kind of uh, basic data then uh, yeah so this is also non-mandatory, so I'll skip all of this, but there's quite a lot. Please have a look at uh, what kind of fields are here. This FSP means if you have a first uh, service point. So if you have restricted uh, the individual to say you are allowed to only go to this first point of care, and then uh, that's your primary care provider, and after that you can get referred, then you can also indicate these restrictions here. Now you save uh, this. I will just add a family of two here, but you can have as many numbers as you want. Um, then the next part basically is, so now here you can create under insurance a roster of the full family. It's two members, 10 members, 20, whatever. Uh, then you add the next thing, which is what's called policies. So this is now the coverage of that particular family. So I say starting from today, uh, and then the system searches what products are active as of this date. So these are the two from before and these are the two which were created now. So let's add one of the products which we had created. Uh, so you see here, you have here a start date which is as of today and you have an expiry date which is one year later. So this is calculated from the product. I allocate some enrollment officer who has done this enrollment and this is then dependent on if you remember when you created uh, login accounts for all uh, for uh, the, the accounts that you were creating also for enrollment officer you indicate location so depending on which enrollment officers uh, can enroll people in that location you'll have this drop down list so this is where also your registers which you configured are coming together and now in this case, you have a due policy value of uh, 2000 because it was 1000 per individual. And here now, the if you see here, policy status is idle and the policy value is 2000. So all, the obvious next step then is you've created a full roster of uh, the family. You've got the uh, policy which you have allocated to this family. And then of course, the payment has to be indicated against uh, that policy. If you remember payer I mentioned to you, so this is what 
it does. It gives you a drop down in case there's a third party payer for that family. Uh, if you leave it as select a payer, this basically means the family themselves pays. Uh, this is a payment towards contribution. In some schemes, they also had additional so called photo fee, which was not uh, calculated against the product. It was accounted for separately, and hence this is there. But otherwise, it's a contribution payment which is done. So if you see by default, you would expect a payment of 2000 against the policy value of uh, 2000 remaining balance being zero then uh, you add a receipt number which you have the date of payment let's say it's today and then the type of payment so i just indicate right now cash now it tells you that the contribution matches the policy value uh, and now when you come back to this uh, family page basically you will notice that the status of the policy is now active so essentially, this is how you enter a family into open IMS. Uh, you enter, you start with the head of the household, you add the remaining family members, you then allocate a policy and then a payment towards that policy. And one small part, which I also additionally wanted to show was in context of the uh, health facility utilization part. So I mentioned that you can when the person then goes with the card, their card gets scanned and information comes back. But also like in Nepal, there are health facilities who directly access open IMS using their login. Uh, they can also then just go and indicate here the individual that they would like to query and get that information. So in this case, I had no picture, but that's the case which I have just entered. So it gives you a summary. So ideally there will be a picture as well. Same thing which I showed now, and I'll also do it on the side again. So, if you if you found it difficult to follow the first time, I am doing it again now, uh, and you can follow. So it's insurance policy at family group. But please try it on your computers yourself. So I go back again. Insurance policies at family group. You can select any location. And also please ask if there's any questions. Okay, so here I've added now the head of household and I'm going to show the plus sign you can add a family member So I've created the family of two. Then you go to policies. Start on today's date. Select a product.
an enrollment officer, the policy value is calculated accordingly, and then you add a contribution. <clears throat> the system flags to you the contribution matches and that the policy is then activated. So as you see here, and you can then take this ID number and just query it to see whether the individual, what is the status of this individual. Uh, let me maybe also show you one with a picture. No, this one doesn't have either. Yeah, okay, that's great. So I see already some people are adding households. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, this case, just add a policy and then after that, a payment, a contribution against the policy. All right. Um, are there any questions in this part? I think this is uh, relatively straightforward. So if you've not completed it, please keep on, please keep on uh, trying. But I, I would hope this is uh, quite simple. So I'll carry on because I think Claims is also quite a crucial part. And uh, as I understood, you also had quite a lot of interest in, uh, um, in, in the claims module. So if it's okay, I'll then move on. And like I said, please come back if there is uh, additional questions. All right. So claims process now. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this is again to firstly explain to you how in reality it functions before then jumping into open IMS. Uh, so there's different ways right now in which claims are entered in open IMS right now. <clears throat> I will show you directly this online client so that it's uh, everything I show you will be on the demo server and you can also practice that easily. Um, so as I said, you can enter claims at the health facility level using a mobile phone and the interface, um, I mean, on the phone, it looks slightly different, but the fields are all exactly what you see also on the online client. So the claims are coming in through either the mobile phone uh, or they can be entered. Uh, if you have access to the internet, you have a login credentials, you can just log in and enter through the online client or you have what's the what's called the offline client which i also mentioned the offline part of the application so if you don't have internet connection there's a local installation which can be added to your computer uh, and you can do uh, installations uh, sorry uh, entry of claims there and then remove uh, those claims into a, what we call an extract physically move it to another location where you have internet and then upload it and it also in some cases still comes in paper form so health facilities are still filling or maybe dispensaries or so are still filling up some claims on paper forms and they send it and somewhere on the insurance side, uh, there's an actor who is responsible for entering into the system. So this is the part how claim gets into the system. And then what happens after that is this uh, sort of internal checking uh, within uh, OpenIMS. And here what is happening is again, I clustered it as some level of automatic checking. So if you remember, uh, you were making configurations at the level of services and items. What is offered to women? What is offered to men in outpatient setting, inpatient? These kind of automatic checks already can happen in the system. Or if the person's uh, status was already expired and uh, still the claim was coming in, this claim gets rejected. Uh, what kind of price lists are applied as per your configuration? If the health facility now tries to change it, uh, then these kind of checks can also be done automatically in the system depending on all the configurations you made. So that's the level of automatic checking. 
and then you have a review by a medical advisor. So in all schemes, I think even in your case uh, with uh, your NHIV, you do have departments where you have people who scrutinize claims. And that's what we mean by a review by a medical advisor. So this is a manual check, which is still undertaken, uh, which can be done then in open IMS. And after this is done, you then move the claim forward and it does the final calculations depending on uh, the product configurations that you did. So if you had ceilings for a family, for an individual, et cetera, uh, all of this is then applied uh, and then adjusted against uh, the individual's uh, remaining ceiling. Um, and that's the last part really then uh, where you can create a consolidated claims report based on which you are then uh, going to make payments. So this is now what I will, this part is what I will now show on the demo server. Like I said, uh, on the app as well, there is the so-called claims app and it's uh, exactly the same thing that we are doing here when we submit claims. So whatever is on the app, uh, that's also what is on the system here. So now I'm back to the demo server. Uh, and in here, uh, there is the, sorry, the claims part. Just a second. Uh, there's a question about system-based claim review. Let me know if I answer it here. Um, so the first step is, as I said, the entry of a claim. So let's say in the slides which I showed you, let's take the case, this particular case of an online client. So I'm a health facility who has access, has been given credentials to enter the claim directly. I go to my browser, I have an internet connection, I go to the link um, and I log in the health facility. Uh, please keep in mind right now, the account you're all using is called an admin account. And so I have access to all of these fields here. But in the case of uh, a health facility who logs in, they will not have access, for example, to insurees here. They will only have access to the relevant module. So they are allowed to, for example, only submit claims. The review is on the side of the insurance scheme. So the health facilities will only be allowed to enter a new health facility claim. So like you see here, uh, I would be depending on my login. Again, I am an admin account, so I am able to log in and have access to all of these. But depending on the health facility user, the claim admin, the claim administrator whose account is created, uh, I would already have these fields pre-selected. So I would be belonging to a particular uh, healthcare facility here. and I'm a particular claim administrator. So now this is something which will all be there beforehand, depending on my login. So the region, district, health facility I belong to and who am I as the claim administrator. And then you would just add a new claim. So this is how the claim looks like. And you have here the person that I just entered. So if you see the, the new individual that I entered as of today, this person shows up. I indicate that the visit was today. So the person's coverage has started today. If there is a mismatch, the system also does that check. So if this individual's claim comes for yesterday, even though the person has started uh, in the insurance scheme today, the claim gets rejected. So I don't want that to happen. So I will indicate that the person had come in today, um, I have the person, uh, he has left also today. This is where the inpatient, outpatient distinguishing can also happen. So if the person, the patient was uh, admitted now and discharged on a different date, you can also indicate that. In this case, I will just say this person came in for an outpatient visit uh, and the health facility then has the choice then uh, to also immediately submit the claim. So I say I'm claiming it also today. The visit was a regular visit. Um, whatever, I take some diagnosis. So this is the list which uh, I showed you before, which is configured. You have a unique claim ID, which should be given. In case you have any secondary diagnosis, etc., you can add those. Um, and otherwise, I'll carry on. These are additional information which is given here, which is more for the reference to know what kind of uh, previous claims, etc., were there for this individual. In this case, there were no other uh, visits by this individual. So I will quickly just go to allocating some service. So let's say this person just came in for a general consultation. 
and let's say sir paracetamol was given to this individual and the person is then sent home yes okay here i gave uh, 10 paracetamols accordingly the price gets calculated and you see the total claim amount shows here so this is for each claim what kind of price list we had configured before um, paracetamols total price etc is given here and then i save the claim so this is now the task which is done at the side of the health facility which is just the submission of claim so i'll remember the claim number here test 1231 now as i said i have an admin account so i have access to different things but a health facility would be able to do just this task they are not allowed to further move the claim in the system. That's on the side of the health insurance scheme. <clears throat> so on the health insurance scheme, I will now look at this so-called entered state. So someone would uh, on the insurance side say, okay, I look at what claims were entered today. Uh, this is the claim that I just entered. So the data entry person or whatever will see this is an entered state and let me now everything in it has been provided. Uh, I will now move this claim forward. So I will submit the selected claim for the first level, which I said was the automatic checks. So you see here, there is also an indication of the status of these claims, which is uh, indicated. So what kind of tasks you're doing, some kind of log which you can follow with. But at this point now, I have submitted the claim and the claim seems to have gone through. So now this is the first level of check. So the claim has gone through the automatic checks. And as I said before, then the next step is for the so-called manual review. So you have now, again, I'm an admin, so I can see all of this, but now the data entry operator on the insurance scheme side will not have access to reviews because that's, let's say, the responsibility of the medical advisor. So when the medical advisor logs in, they will only be able to see reviews here. So now I go to reviews and let's say I am now a medical advisor and I come and I would, as part of my tasks, I have to screen certain claims. So what you can do here is uh, you can essentially, um, it's also possible, I mean, it's very likely that any medical advisor does not have four or five claims as you see listed here. They will have thousands of claims if the scheme is big enough, uh, coming to them maybe even on a daily basis. And uh, it's not normal that they are able to go through all of these or the team of medical advisors, let's say, are not able to go through all of these. So what one can do is then uh, they always take out, uh, generally speaking, some kind of sample out of the claims and look at those. So that's the same logic here that what you see here, you have various filters based on which you can pull out certain claims, which you maybe have interest on. And, or you can also say, I would like to see in all the locations and put out some kind of filters and say, randomly select 10% of the claims or randomly select claims, sorry, not randomly, select claims which are above a particular claim amount or select some which are above um, we call variance. So if uh, on average for certain diagnosis, uh, the prices are calculated and kept in the system. And if it varies, let's say 10% from that value, select those claims for me. So this way you can filter out these claims. Um, these are different filters, as I said. I will just look at this one claim which I had. You can also manually select these claims. So right now, since I'm looking only at one claim, I will just select this. And the selection here are two types. One is feedback and one is review. So review is on the medical advisor side, whether they review and check um, the details of the claim and feedback essentially is what I mentioned in an earlier session that uh, the system also has a possibility where the medical advisor at this point can say, okay, there's something odd about this case and I would like to get feedback from that individual. So they can trigger a feedback which means the information goes to the enrollment officer, which is uh, which is which has enrolled the family from where the patient comes from. So that person is in the same village and that person gets information, goes to that uh, family uh, and to that individual and then captures some uh, qualitative feedback. So things like, uh, did you actually receive a treatment on this day? You can ask that or uh, did you have to pay any additional fees? 
till you have a surgery or not, you can uh, do uh, collect some kind of qualitative information there in the feedback. So I will just skip that right now. So I'll just say it's bypassed. And what I do want to do is do a review of this claim. So like I said, you can also do these actions in a cluster. You can select and a large number of claims and do the same. You can take these filters uh, and based on that, do this kind of automatic checking. So for example, if you say randomly select 1% of the or 10% of the claims, then out of all the claims which are kind of on the plate of the medical advisor, you can get 10% claims here, the, whose status will automatically be review selected. And those which were not selected, their status will automatically become not selected. So those will not require further uh, review, but these claims will. Now, what does a review look like? So once the claim has been selected for a review, you essentially get this kind of page. So I've come here now, and this is what you saw at the time of uh, entry. So the medical reviewer basically has all of this information at hand to make a call whether this makes sense or not. So they can look at the claims, um, perhaps even the past claims, uh, what kind of uh, treatments were given, et cetera. <clears throat> and they can then indicate here. So as you see, uh, this is what was submitted. Consultation, one quantity price was 400. Uh, status is right now passed. But this is up to now the medical advisor who can also say, no, actually the diagnosis and let's say the drugs don't make sense. So they can also say, no, actually I'm going to reject this part. Or they can say, I would like to, uh, this is our prescription for this particular treatment. Uh, it should have only been five uh, paracetamols or whatever uh, that should have been uh, provided. So based on that, a medical reviewer can basically uh, make a review of the claim and then uh, save this claim. And now I go back uh, as a medical reviewer again to the status here. Uh, yeah, so as you see, it's all saved. And once this claim is then reviewed by the medical advisor, they can also wait. Maybe this means uh, they need some more questions to be answered by the facility. So at this point, they can just hold on, uh, make further requests and query the health facility, what was done, why was this uh, treatment given, et cetera. So once I have now uh, done the review of the claim, I will then say that the claim review has been delivered. And that's the point where you can say now the claim moves forward for, for the processing. The status is again given here. So your claim is now being processed. And there is the status called rejected. So at any point, if a claim does not get accepted or if the Medical reviewer is also rejected. The claim then goes into this state of uh, rejected. Uh, right now, I would go to what's called evaluated. And this is the state now where my claim has come in. So this claim went through the automatic checks. Everything was approved. Went to the medical advisor who selected it for review and then uh, said everything is fine. Uh, delivered the review, moved it forward. And now this claim has been uh, processed completely. So it uh, sits in what we call the evaluated state. And now the final report on how you know what kind of uh, uh, final payments, et cetera, have been done. So this is how I showed you selection of a single claim. Like this, you can, uh, there can be hundreds and hundreds of claims, maybe some you select. Uh, and by the way, those which you do not select, the status here will be, as you see here, not selected by past. Uh, and then you move all of these claims also forward. So you say, I have not selected them for review, but I move them forward for processing. And then I would go into reports and I would now try to open the claim overview report for this period of time. I think I have to remember the facility now, which I did it for. Okay, sorry, just a second. I have forgotten the healthcare facility I did this for. Uh, 
Okay, so it was the Jambero District Hospital. So you can essentially then, uh, this is one claim and you do 10 claims, 20 claims, 30 claims, etc. Uh, and at the end of it, then you can prepare this kind of a report. So you can also then uh, pull it out, but let me just maybe increase the size of the screen a bit. So what you see here, this is the claim which we added. Uh, summaries are given here. So what was actually um, details of the person, the status is now evaluated. If there was a rejection, they would be giving a rejection reason as well. Uh, what kind of amount was claimed, what was approved, adjusted by the medical advisor, nothing. So it's exactly the same. And then the paid amount was 500. So that's basically going to be your final report then, which then gives you a summary of all the costs. So I will then move quickly to a small exercise that you just try this out from your side. Uh, and in the meanwhile, I see some things have been typed. So I'll also try to answer these questions just in the event of time. But please go ahead and try this. Um, for one of the individuals that you had created before, try to add a claim. Uh, submit a claim for this particular location. I mean, I give you a location so that you remember the health facility. So try to do it for this particular health facility. And for that claim of the individual, put a claim for today, outpatient care. Uh, give it, um, may let's say the same way, a consultation, paracetamol, or whatever service and item. Uh, submit the claim, uh, take it to the check status, then go to the medical reviewer as I did. Uh, go to the review and don't put any filters, just go directly to that one claim which you have added and then manually just select it for review and skip the feedback, uh, then review the claim and submit to evaluate it. So exactly what I did right now, and then go to tools and generate a claim for your report. Please try it uh, and let's take maybe five, uh, let's, yeah, let's try five minutes and if not a bit more, uh, but let's at least try, uh, try, give it a shot and see uh, till what point you get. Keep in mind, uh, it's also possible, I've given you a very simple use case. If you put something uh, which doesn't fit into the combination, for example, a service uh, which is not covered by the health facility uh, or a service which is not covered in the product or so, uh, or you go wrong with the dates, it's possible the claim direct, directly goes into the rejected states. So what I'm giving you here is a simple case, which I know will just get you through till the end. So it's possible you might have different flows where a claim might get rejected, but otherwise, if you follow these instructions, it will go through all the stages exactly like I explained right now. So please try it and I'm going to look at some of the questions and also answer it while I'm doing this. Um, Uh, and the gentleman who put in, or uh, the lady who put in the question, please, uh, I will answer the question and please let me know in case I have not answered it. Uh, so one question was, is there a system-based claim review? I hope I covered that. So I guess what you mean, uh, some automatic checks which the system can do. And that's what I indicated was in the first stage. So when you submit a claim, and then you process it, it goes through the first level of automatic checks in the system before the medical reviewer can uh, start uh, scrutinizing the claims. So I hope that's what you were asking for, the system-based uh, claim review. If not, please just unmute and let me know. Uh, the next thing was how uh, can we customize example currency? Yes, uh, at the time of uh, setting up the system. And these are things uh, which I would also encourage you to join the next module where uh, the second module we wanted to do a training on installation and country localization and that's exactly at that point you can make um, these are the country based customizations which you require language uh, services currencies all of this will also be covered in that and so in short yes uh, you can customize it to your local currency uh, your local services and language 
Uh, and then are there claims linked to payment mechanism, which we have set the indicators in the product, right? Um, yes. So what you have configured in the product will define the payment mechanism to the healthcare facility. So in the, in the configuration of products, if you remember on the top right, this list of services and items, which is there, uh, that's where you define what payments or how you will make the payments. So you can indicate there, I will pay as per the agreed price list with the healthcare facility. Um, and whatever price list you have uh, created there, then you say you can have a co-payment or not. And if you have additional ceilings, etc., uh, these are all things which are applied. And that basically defines how you pay the healthcare facility. Also, the at the end, I showed you the capitation system. Uh, and I showed you the, um, the relative pricing concept. These are also two different payment mechanisms based on which providers are paid. So these are also different ways in which uh, you are paying the providers. So I hope these have answered these questions. And if not, uh, please just unmute yourself and uh, let me know. And I hope in the meanwhile, you've also been practicing this. Uh, just trying to take the claim through the different stages. Okay, perfect. I, I think, I hope I answered the questions, uh, but please try it and uh, also let me know if there are more questions that are coming up. I think this is probably one of the more uh, useful things for you. So uh, maybe take a bit of time and try, keep trying this out. Uh, so someone has said we can enter to the system, but not complete any manual guideline to share with us. Um, if you could, or maybe just unmute and let me know where exactly you're stuck. I can try to help you out. Um, but like I said before, uh, there is this uh, user manual, which you will find in the system on the top right here, with the, where the question mark is. Uh, if you just click on that, you also go to the user manual, which then gives you a description of each and every field um, within the system. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Please go ahead. Uh, was there? Does that answer your question in terms of, or if you let me know where exactly you're stuck, I can. Uh -huh. And another thing, uh, what I would suggest is, uh, as a resource, I've also created this, uh, this wiki page. I will drop it in the chat here. Uh, this is the demo script. Um, and the purpose of the demo script was to also tell you step by step, exactly like what I have covered right now. This demo script also has a documentation which tells you step by step uh, how you can uh, enter a claim or enter a new family uh, and takes you through all the different stages. So yes, apart from the manual, uh, if you want to go back and understand how to enter a claim, what are the different stages, you can also have a look at this uh, demo script. All right. Um, is it, uh, ha have people been able to enter some claim? Is it okay if I move on or? Okay, you can move on. Okay, thank you. Um, but like I said, please try. I actually don't see anything here. So I'm not sure whether people really followed or whether no, because these are all the things which I had added before. 
Uh, but I really hope that you're trying. And like I said, uh, if there are also questions later on, just uh, please let me know. Um, I will just, in the event of time, uh, quickly move to one last bit which I wanted to show you. So this, uh, with this, what we have done is, in terms of processes, we've covered enrollment process, healthcare service utilization, and claims process. Uh, one last process which I also wanted to show will is uh, the so-called renewal process. Um, and the renewal process here again, there's lots of different ways in, in reality where uh, renewals are happening uh, within open um, So there are some kind of more manual ways. So where internet is, is really a problem, there's limited connectivity. In what they do is from the insurer side, from the insurance office, from the web application, uh, what you can do is you can create a kind of manual paper list of uh, renewals. So you can print a report out saying in this particular village in the next month or so, uh, you will have so many people expiring. So the enrollment officer belonging to that village gets a list and they can then follow up and then do the renewals on their phone. Uh, you can then also have the case where this same list, instead of printing it out, you can also then have this list uh, taken out of the system in form of a small extract, which then physically has to be taken to the enrollment officer who might have a mobile phone and then add this extract on the mobile phone. And the person, the enrollment officer then has kind of uh, this list offline on his phone and they can go uh, renew the clients. <clears throat> and then uh, send the same information back if they have internet. And if they don't, then this is again physically transferred back. So the extract is taken from the phone, taken back to the uh, office and then uploaded in the system. Uh, then there's the scenario where there is some connectivity. So one was, uh, uh, this was also initially created where this mechanism where SMS could go from the server side, it gets triggered and sends an SMS uh, directly to uh, the enrollment officer initially uh, and the enrollment officer in case they don't have internet but they do have mobile connectivity at least that an sms would transfer this information to the enrollment officer who would then do renewals uh, now what has been added is that the sms can also directly go to the client because i'll show in the next step we also have a way um, in which clients can directly renew themselves uh, and then of course there's the more standard way the relatively easier way, which is that these lists are directly sent through data transfer on the mobile phone app of the enrollment officer who can then follow up with these families uh, and undertake the renewals. So this part, which I mentioned with uh, SMS directly to clients, uh, what this is, uh, so in Tanzania again, uh, because that's the one context we have where uh, mobile payments are being used. Um, what happens is that on the server side, it sends a SMS to the client indicating that uh, you have to renew. This is your expiry date, etc. If you would like to renew, please dial this USSD code. Uh, and then using that USSD code, they navigate through the functions and essentially make a payment on their mobile phone. So through mobile money. And when that payment happens, that full payment goes, uh, the information gets to the web application, the payment is complete, uh, the family will be renewed and this information comes back uh, through an SMS giving a confirmation of uh, a policy being activated. So in a renewal case, the information can go directly to the family uh, through this uh, SMS mechanism. Uh, and if you have mobile, and this is of course uh, only relevant in cases where you do have mobile payments. So you make the mobile payment and can get uh, the policy activated directly uh, within uh, a very short period of time. So that's kind of uh, the different ways in which uh, this can be done and what this translates to then in terms of how the renewals are done uh, on the policies app. If I am a uh, enrollment officer, basically the uh, logic which I mentioned where I would just get it directly from the server. I essentially just have uh, this renewals, uh, I update, and it gives me a list of policies. So here, for example, you have this one policy, which is allocated to me. And the logic the system follows is that in any policy that is expired, which is related to 
me as an enrollment officer based on my login, they will all be featured here. Plus in the coming 14 days, which you can then set in your system, whether it's 14, 30 days, whatever. Uh, so in the in this case, this is in the coming anything expired or anything which will expire in the next 14 days. Uh, any policy that's allocated to me as an enrollment officer will feature here. And then I can do a renewal here once the family decides. And if they decide that they do not want to, you can also say discontinue this policy. And on the system as well, it's a very simple logic here. So now I showed you just how to enter a policy, but I will go now to policies, for example, and just look at what kind of expired policies are here to show you how this can be done. So if everything, as I mentioned before, the process was done on paper. Um, yeah, uh, in this particular case, so the process, let's say there was this particular household, uh, which was provided to the enrollment officer, they had to follow up and uh, the renewal is done, payment, etc., is done. And in a manual way, everything comes back, which means if it doesn't come directly from the app, uh, like I showed you here, uh, if it's not sent from here, if it is, then you will automatically have a renewed policy. But if not, uh, you get it in paper form or something on the side of the insurance scheme. You just have a simple thing, which is uh, you select that policy and indicate this policy has now been renewed. In case there is a change in the family, you would of course then have to make the modification in the family first. And that you can do here on the online application as well on the mobile phone app. You also have a function for doing the modifications. So you modify a family, add a member, and then perhaps the renewal happens. But otherwise renewal is just a simple function. Uh, you just click on this R renewal um, and you get exactly the same information that you get on the mobile phone, which I showed you uh, for the renewal of a family. So that's exactly the same information. Uh, you have a date on which the enrollment happens. Um, so you indicate today I'm making a renewal of this policy. So the start expiry date and who did this? So you can do it in exactly the same way. The policy then gets renewed. So as you see here now, this was the old expired policy. This is now the policy which I just renewed. And now against this policy. So I have selected this policy, which is now in blue. Against this policy, I make a contribution payment. And that's what you're doing on the phone as well. You're indicating this is the policy now, which will be uh, renewed for this particular household by this enrollment officer. This is the amount, receipt number, contribution, etc. And that's what you have here. So this way, you're also doing a renewal of uh, a policy. And then when I, when I do this, if you, uh, sorry, I didn't flag it before, but basically the effective date was missing. But now once I make the payment, uh, an effective date comes in place because it says your coverage will now, since you made the payment, the coverage will start from today. And then your start date, expiry dates are calculated and the policy status is now active. So that's basically how you do then a renewal. And at this point, I won't do another exercise with renewals, but rather just stop and uh, maybe open the door for any kind of uh, questions which you may have. I see on the chat, there's uh, nothing else. Uh, is there any kind of questions that you have? Yeah, there's something. Please feel free to also um, unmute yourself and uh, yeah. Okay, this was just a request to ask participants for questions. Um, and in addition, um, I have also in the slides here, um, I think Chai has also shared with you the links. Uh, if you would like to practice this further, um, we did practice in different uh, small segments. You did accounts, then you did uh, price lists, then you did facilities. Um, I would also suggest if you would want to try it out, now let's put it all together um, and try to create your own, own scheme on OpenMS uh, on the demo server. Uh, start again, like I said before, uh, go down to up, 
So you start with the geographical location, create your own price list, facilities, user accounts, products, etc. And say, for example, try it out for a month. So you enroll families, uh, maybe 10 families or so over a period of one month. Um, I mean, not that you have to, for example, you can do now the entry for previous month. So it's not that you do every day, but just in a single day, you can sit and try to practice it out. Uh, enroll families, add claims, um, and maybe just as a simple exercise, try to look at the performance then. And I've indicated here two reports. You can look at the policies and the claim overview report. Um, and if you would like to interact a bit more uh, on the wiki page, you can also upload these reports to just show um, uh, that you were able to undertake all of these tasks and what it looks like in your report and just do it for your location. So just replicate what location you have, uh, some uh, facilities that you have, and just try to uh, play with it and add to the wiki page. So I'm still open to any questions if there are any, and uh, otherwise for further practice, I've mentioned some additional things. Um, and yeah, in additionally, I mean, there's a lot of other links which are there. Um, which I again have added here on the slide. So it's just one place where you get um, all of the information. If you need uh, any more information, I mean, there's a hint to reach out to um, uh, colleagues there uh, can respond to you and or connect to us or directly reach out uh, to any of us. Um, and yeah, otherwise, uh, I think that would be it from my side. Maybe on the colleagues from uh, from Vietnam, if you have anything to add or so. Or from the NHIB, would you like to add anything or? Uh, no, I, I just, um, thank you for your good presentation, but I would like uh, to know that if we would like to pack this by ourselves, yeah, to the demo uh, server, can can we go directly? Oh. Absolutely. Uh, the link which I shared with you, uh, open and, and what is it called demo dot openms. You can do that. Okay. And another thing that because uh, um, from the diagnostic side, I, I saw that there's a uh, um you, you you talk about the uh, ICD code something yeah, but uh, if if we don't have that. Uh, can we just go to like a diagnostic? You can use any list uh, that you apply in your context. Um, uh, okay. I'm I'm guessing if you don't have ICD-10 or not, uh, you might have created um, some kind of cluster of uh, your own diagnosis, right? Or is it completely free and health facilities are allowed to diagnose mm -hmm. in the way they want? Yes, we, we we try to uh, to uh, develop uh, uh, the system for ICD, but uh, it's not yet uh, functioning. Uh, functioning, I think yes. So I think uh, now we we uh, we don't have that for all hospital. <laughs> and okay. another one that for for the list of uh, like a, um, a medical um, uh, price list or um, service price list something we have to do. Uh, um, Facility by facility, yeah, yeah. I think we we have to um, uh, to create ourselves the list. That's right. Um, yes. Yeah, so maybe just I, I go back quickly also to your other point. If you do not have standardized diagnosis, um, one thing I mean I am guessing still the approach would be that you would like at some point to have some standardization across. So one approach for you could be that you. Uh, as you said, maybe some facilities follow some kind of standardized list. You can start with one uh, list which you have worked out maybe with one facility or so and then have another category, say others. So if okay. uh, people are not able to follow that categorization, they can use that. And as you go along, uh, you can further add to that list and keep refining it. So as I showed before, you can have an existing list and maybe let's say six months down the line, you have done a review of claims and try to create more categories, uh, you can then update your older list and add this. So in cases where you do not have a standardized diagnosis uh, categories which are being applied across all the facilities, 
uh, and you would like to create these standardized uh, categories at some point, you can start in this kind of approach. If you don't have it at all, you can also leave it completely blank. So you can, uh, at the time of setting up, you can indicate that this uh, field is non-mandatory or so. But generally speaking, uh, I, I think it's a good practice if you try to create some kind of categories um, as you go along. Because also uh, for your claim scrutinization, when you go on later, uh, we are also, for example, working on um, an AI module for claims verification, uh, where there will be additional criteria which you can add to the claim verification process. Right now, the automatic checks are limited to what I explained before but we would like to have more ways in which you can do automated checking. And there perhaps diagnosis could also be a useful way where you can say, for example, for diagnosis of, um, I don't know, malaria, you should not be giving antibiotics. And uh, this kind of check then you would like to have in the system automatically. So in that case, it would be good if you are capturing uh, the diagnosis as well. So that's just to say that you can still uh, decide how you want to do it. If you don't have standard categories, you can manage. But ideally, you would want to kind of create some standards and that you can also, uh, those scenarios also you can accommodate here in open English. And uh, then your other question about uh, the facilities and the price list. So what you definitely have to create is each facility in the system. That's a given. If you have 10 facilities, then you create 10 healthcare facilities health, uh, in the function as I showed. The question of the price list is you have to then see whether there's any commonality of price list across these 10 health facilities. If all 10 health facilities follow 10 different price lists, then you can create 10 different price lists. But let's say out of the 10, five are uh, government run dispensaries, which all follow the same price list and the other five do not. Then in that case, you can also create one price list which you allocate to the five dispensaries which follow the same one price list. And then for the remaining, you can create a separate price list. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much. Okay, perfect. You're welcome. All right. Um, so if there are no other uh, questions, I mean, we are slightly over time as well i mean i'm i'm happy to answer if there's anything else and uh, if not otherwise um, i would say from my side i mean thank you very much uh, for for being there for these two sessions for the the huge amount of time that we also uh, asked you to invest here and i hope this uh, this training was useful of course time is not enough so we couldn't really practice quite a lot but as i said the demo server is there please uh, feel free to just play around with it uh, one thing to keep in mind is the demo server, our data gets uh, reset at the end of each week, which means if you do any data entry, any data entry I did today on Saturday, or sorry, Sunday, I think uh, it gets uh, reset back to the original data set. But I'll ask my colleagues to maybe remove that so that uh, if you would like to uh, play around with it, you have maybe a few weeks or so. And in the coming few weeks, um, your data will not get lost. Anything you add will be there. Uh, and you can keep building on it. Uh, and maybe I ask them to just open it up uh, maybe to end of June or so, um, so you don't have any problems. But otherwise, uh, thank you from my side. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm from the Swiss Tropical Public Health Institute and working with the uh, Open IMS Initiative uh, to support this uh, capacity development efforts. Uh, and also we are related to quite a lot of uh, insurance implementation schemes uh, in different uh, contexts. Uh, so that's kind of our background and history with uh, Open IMS as well. Uh, Cha, is there anything from your side, from the AN side, to wrap up? Um, hello. Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, yes. This is Christine from AN. So we would just like to thank everyone for participating in the Open IMS online training. Uh, in a span of two days, we have learned about uh, the features available in Open IMS and the insurance processes that it can, it can support. And uh, also we were able to catch a glimpse of Laos health insurance scheme during the uh, Q&A sessions. So um, we at AHIN, as part of the Open AMIS initiative, we hope we can further collaborate with each other and see how uh, Open AMIS can contribute to your health insurance scheme. I think from our last session, we have received um, questions and how Open Imis can connect with your 
uh, existing insurance system, uh, management information system, PETB. Um, of course, Open Image is capable of doing this, but it would be very helpful for the technical experts of Open Image uh, to understand how ATD works and how your national health insurance scheme uh, really operates. So uh, we're looking forward that Dr. Bufat, uh, Bufat and her team can help us with this. And hopefully after this training, um, you will be able to assess what particular features of Open Image you're interested in and which module would you like to integrate with ATD given your uh, context in your country. If you have further questions, you may list them down. Then after that, um, we can arrange a meeting between you and the te technical experts of Open Image on how we can move forward. You know, so we can have a dedicated time for all your questions, especially the technical ones. So we would also like to reiterate that we at AN can support you also by um, hiring local consultants of your choice can help you local, localize the open image server and do other things related to the uh, open image initiative uh, in Lao. So if you have questions, feel free to contact us. We'll be very happy to answer them. And uh, after this session, we'll be sending slides and the um, also the open image manual that you are requesting. So once again, we would like to thank the team of Dr. Buafat from NHID and also the other stakeholders present in this group, the Swiss Red Cross, uh, Mr. Virasak, uh, Daniel, and Mr. Um, Anuson, and also Mr. Thong from ILO. And of course, I'd like to thank Mr. Siddharth uh, Srivastava for facilitating this training for the um, Indian community and the Lao contingents. So, uh, if you would like to add anything from NHIB, the Swiss Red Cross, and ILO before we end the session, we would uh, like to hear from you. Over. Okay. I, uh, on behalf of NHIB, we are very uh, appreciate uh, your um, support for this. And uh, we, we think that uh, it's very helpful yeah, for us, because we, we, we now also uh, think about how to develop a more appropriate uh, system for our system. Yeah, especially for e-claim um, system that we saw that from the uh, claiming process here. Yeah. So I think we, we need to have uh, further support also. It, we will contact you um, in, in the future. Thank you. Noted on that, uh, Dr. Buafat, uh, let's keep in touch via email. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Huh? Um, Mr. Virasak or any others from the SRC, would you like to say something before we finally end the session? Yeah, uh, that's fine for me. I think that uh, it's very useful to uh, go more in detail, but I think that uh, we need time, more time to uh, learning in depth. Uh, based on, uh, especially trying to find out from the user manual that, tr uh, that can, um, and you know, that I uh, try to practice more, and then we can see that how to move on. Okay? So for this stage, I think that I don't have any further comments. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Virasak. Uh, we will send the user uh, manual after the uh, after this call. Mr. Thong, would you like to say something? Uh, yes. So um, I think that the training here is quite. Uh, useful for, for us, especially for the Lao um, NHIB. So um, I think we still have to um, go deeper on, on the um, application, right? Using the manual and then um, explore more on, on it. 
So it is the, the right time that um, I think NHMB is considering the future um, MIS system. So uh, me as the ILO also um, here to support NHMB too. So if in future uh, they decided to use this system, so I think we can um, contact you more on that. So thank you very much. Very useful for us. Uh, thank you everyone for your time uh, chat. Thank you, Jin. I guess that's it from our side. Uh, I will also be sharing with you the copy of the recording in case you want to review it. Cha, can I just uh, uh, request one more thing? If you could also share, please, the the wiki page link where we had the details of the two modules. Uh, because I think uh, to the participants here, a lot of your questions were also related to country customization. And after I finish this one module, the second one, as I said, is really on uh, country localization, installation of the software, and what local modifications you can do. So I would also encourage you to uh, register for those trainings as well. Yes, noted, Sir Siddharth. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.